connection. Check, check, one, two, three. What do you see? Good morning, everybody. Good to see all these happy, excited people. Ah, except for Vincent. All right, hey, I know you all are happy to see each other, but I really need your attention. This time for real. I need you to find a seat and then stand up. Everybody, hey, Zach, we up and running? Okay, so we're live in Clearwater, so you all behave yourself. Um, go for it. All right. Woo! Beautiful morning, beautiful day today. We can come together. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. There's no other, no other time like your time today. In your presence, there's nothing like it. Thank you, Jesus. I just pray right now that you would just fill this room with your presence, that you would sweep it up, that you would sweep up all the baggage, all the negative thoughts, that you would just take it away, Lord, and that you would just fill us up instead. Fill us up with gratitude, with thankfulness, that you would fill us up with just wanting to praise you, the urge, the desire. Fill our hearts up. Help, help us to want more. Help us to desire to want more of you. Yes, yes, Jesus. Help us to desire more. Desire more. I just pray that we would just sing together and sing to you. Sing this with me, it's always like, it's always like springtime with you, making all things new. Your light is breaking through the time. This love it is sweeter than wine, bringing joy, bringing light. Your hope is rising like the dawn. Oh, 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 yes, we're coming alive in you, Lord. Yes, we are. It's always like, it's always like springtime with you, making all things new. Your light is breaking through the dark. This love, this love, it is sweeter than wine, bringing joy. Light. Your hope is rising like the dawn. Sing with me. This is what you do. This is what you do. You make me come alive. This is what you do. 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 You 
vaguely come alive. This is what you do. This is what you do. Sing it again. Oh, this is what you do. This is what you do. Yes, you make me come alive. This is what you do. This is what you do. Every day, every day. This is what you do. This is what you do. Yes, you make me come alive. You make me come alive. You make. You make me come alive. You make me come alive. Yes, you do. You make me come alive. 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 Yes, you make me come alive. Yes, you make me come alive. Oh, yes, we're coming alive in you, Jesus. Sing it out. Oh, this is what you do, this is what you do. Oh, you make me come alive, this is what you do, this is what you do. Oh, every day you show up, this is what you do, this is what you do. Every day filled with joy in the morning, this is what you do, this is what you do. Sing it out, oh, this is what you do, this is what you do. Oh, you make me come alive. This is what you do. This is what you do. You fill my heart up with joy. This is what you do. This is what you do. Oh, you make me come alive. This is what you do. This is what you do, Lord. You make me come alive. You make me come alive. Yes, you make me come alive. Oh, you make me come alive, fill me up. You make me come alive. You make me come alive. You make me come alive, Jesus. Oh, it's like I'm living for the first time. It's like I'm living for the first time. It's like I'm living for the first time. Finally living for the first time. Oh, it's like I'm living for the first time. Oh, it's like I'm living for the first time in your presence. I'm living for the first time in you, in you. Oh, it's a new season. It's a new season. It's always new with you. A joyful morning with you. A joyful beginning with you. You make all things new. You make all things new. Yes, you do, Jesus. Oh, you make me come alive. 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 Cause you make me come alive. You make me come alive. You make me come alive. You make me come alive yes, you made me come alive you made me come alive yes you do you make me come alive in you alive in you Lord cause this is what you do this is what you do oh you make me come alive oh you make me come alive yes this is what you do this is what you do it's a new season with you with you with you it's always a new season with you with you in my life Lord it's always a new season with you, season with you, Lord. Cause you make me come alive, you make me come alive, you make me come alive, 
Yes, you make me come alive. You make me come alive. You make me come alive. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, Jesus. Cause it's like I'm living for the first time. Oh, it's like I'm living for the first time. It's like I'm living for the first time with you, with you. Oh, it's like I'm living for the first time. It's like I'm living for the first time. Yes, it's always new with you, Jesus. Oh, yes, it's always new, Jesus, with you. My daily day to day, it's always new. Your mercy is new, your grace is new, your joy is new, your love is new from day to day. Oh, yes, you make all things new, all things new. It's always a new day with you, a new day with you. forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance the exodus of my heart because you found me and you freed me you held back the waters for my release oh Yahweh because you're the God who fights for me Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah, cause you have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, sing this with me, a cloud. A cloud by day, it's a sign that you are with me. A fire by night, it's the guiding light to my feet. You found, you found me, and you freed me. You held back the waters for my release. Oh, Yahweh, oh, cause you're the God who fights for me, Lord of Yes, 
you let me. You're the God who fights for me. Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. the Lord on high. Hallelujah. 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 To the Lord on high. Sing it out. Hallelujah. 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 To the Lord on high. One more time. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Cause you have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord Almighty, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, the Lord God Almighty. Get up and dance. Oh, 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 yes, you saved me, you saved me, you saved me, Lord. Yes, you take me out. You stepped, oh, because you stepped into my agent. You took me by the hand and you marched me out of freedom into the promised land now i will not forget you lord i'll sing of all you've done death is swallowed up forever yes it is by the fury of your love you stepped into my Egypt. yes and you took me by the head and you marched me out of freedom into the promised land now I will not forget you, Lord. I'll sing of all you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have told Sing it out. You're the God who fights for 
Hallelujah, 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 Jesus, Jesus, victorious King, hallelujah, 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 you are risen, you are risen, King, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, your risen King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to our risen King. Sing it out. Wonderful name it is. 
the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of what a wonderful, what a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. Oh, what a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grief. Cause the heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. Cause you have no rival. Yes, you have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory. Christ my King. Oh, what a powerful name it is. And nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of... Again, what a powerful... What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus, and death could not hold you, the veil told before you, you silenced the boss of sin and grief. The heavens are roaring, all the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again, cause you have no rival. And you have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Cause yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, and nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of again. What a powerful, what a powerful name it is. Oh, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, 
the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Begin to meditate. Meditate on his goodness. Meditate on how good he's been to you. He's so powerful, so wonderful, so beautiful. Yes, you are, yes, you are so good, so wonderful, so powerful. There's no one like you and nothing you can't do. Nothing you can't do, Jesus. You're just that good, you're just that good. You're just that good You're just that good to us, Abba Oh yes, you're just that good You're just that good to us, Abba You're so powerful, so mighty Nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a powerful name it is And nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Oh, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Yeah, nothing can stand against you, Lord. You're all on high. You're the highest of highs, Lord. Nothing can stand against your mighty name. You're so powerful, so mighty. Nothing can stand against you. You conquered all with your death, with your death, Lord. You're so powerful. Oh, nothing can rival the power in the name of Jesus. Oh, nothing can stand against the weight of your name. Oh, nothing can come against your name, Jesus. The Lord on high who took care of death and put it right back into its place. Oh, yes, you have no rival, Lord. You stand alone, holy and worthy of all. You took death and you shoved it down on the cross you did, Lord. Oh, yes, can nothing can stand against the immense weight of your name, Jesus. Oh, yes, you're so powerful, 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 powerful. Oh, yes, you're so powerful, powerful, powerful. 
so immeasurable, Lord. Oh, yes, you're so wonderful, 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 wonderful. Oh, yes, you're so, so wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, you're so beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yes, you stand alone, so beautiful and glorious, shining like the stars, Jesus. So beautiful, so wonderful, so glorious. And I can't even stand, I can't even stand in place. You're so beautiful. Oh, the name of Jesus. the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, so, so beautiful, the name of Jesus, so marvelous, the name of Jesus, so glorious is the name of Jesus All right. I need to show far guys and girls up here. Where are they? So For those of you that don't know, let's all stand up. Stay standing. And if you don't know it, in the bottom of your uh bulletin it says Yeshua HaMashiach Ben Yehovah Rapha and that means in the name of Jesus the anointed one the son of God our healer so okay I want to do a blast on the shofar and then we're going to declare Yeshua HaMashiach Ben Yehovah Rapha and we're going to do that three times and don't hold back. Let loose your lungs. All right. So as soon as they're they're gonna blow a blast on the shofar, then we're gonna we're gonna speak out, and then they're gonna do it again and again. Ready? Go for it. Solomon was asked to build a temple for the name. He was asked to build a temple for the, to, to house the name of God so the name of God would be exalted among the nations, that they would know that Yeshua, not Yeshua, but Yahweh was the Elohim of Elohims, the most high God. There was no other. And this temple was to display his glory. So third temple, 
Everybody know about a third temple coming, right? Okay, so I say that God is now building his third temple. Who, in, uh, there's two temples being built here. One in, I know that they're planning on doing a literal temple in, in Israel. Um, Les probably knows more about that, where they're gathering all the implements all ready to go to build it, but there's a little problem there that's called Dome of the Rock. But God can take care of those little issues. So, but that's not the temple I'm talking about. I believe a third temple right now is being laid in the earth right now. God is building his temple. What's it say in 1 Corinthians 3.11? It says a foundation has already been laid. Who, which is none other than Jesus Christ himself upon which we built upon. Right? So a foundation is laid. I'm just thinking about Asbury. We're all thinking about the, the, what the movement, the awakening going on up there in Kentucky. Asbury, right? Kentucky? Okay, so we're all like awakening up to that. And I'm telling you, it's spreading because God is building the third temple. He's building the third temple because when Ezra came back to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem after the Babylonian captivity, and the first, that Solomon's temple was wiped out ravaged not there anymore he came back guess the first thing that he built the altar the altar this is what you're seeing being established right now in the body of Christ is the altar the altar is being put and I'll tell you what after the altar the foundation gets extended and then after that it, it hold the, the glory becomes to fill the house God is preparing us for the cloud of glory that we've been talking about and so listen, this is our altar. Whenever we come together, think about I'm coming to the altar. I'm, we're restoring and reawakening this third temple for the glory of God to rest upon this globe so they know there's only one God that they every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. It is Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach, Ben Yehovah, their name above all names. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you're building your, your temple, Lord. And here we are, your temple. Fill us with your glory, Lord, as we humble our hearts and bow our knee before you as the only one and true God to be worshipped and to be honored, to be respected, to be feared, and to be awed, to be loved, to be, to be devoted to. You said if we seek you, you will allow us to find you. So we're guaranteed an overwhelming finding of God. If your heart is saying, oh God, I need you, I need you, I want to seek you, I see you, I have to know you, to know you. That was the instructions by David to Solomon. Know God, Solomon. Know him. That means know him intimately. So this name that we just shouted, man, I just thrilled my heart. I just felt the glory would just pump up. It just went, I just cloud just bellowed out from the, from the heavenlies into the place and out of my spirit. And, and I'm just so excited about that. So we just welcome you to Florham River Church this morning. Yeah, welcome you to Florham River Church this morning. And if you're online, we welcome you um, viewing this this morning. We, we, we're going to have some great stuff uh, going on this morning. And so stay tuned. We have um, Les Lawrence, former pastor of this church, kind of a father in the house, a pillar. He's, found, he's part of the foundation of this house that we've been building upon in the name of Jesus Christ. And we're very excited to have him this morning. Yeah. Oh, Yeshua. Don't you love the sound of shofars in the morning? <sighs> Victory. Oh, oh. Feel some walls falling? You guys are enthusiastic. That was awesome. You know what enthusiastic means, right? You guys know? What's it, what's it mean? That's it. Filled with God. Filled with God. Enthusiasm filled with God. Ah, man, I'm feeling militant today. Ah, all right, knock some walls down. Ah. <laughs> Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. Mm. Got me stirred up. Yes, we're going for it. I don't know if I'm going to come back down. <laughs> Oh, my. Oh, I can't help myself. 
<clears throat> so, um, oh, jeez. Thank you, Yeshua. Ah. <laughs> Woo. Okay, so we'll go buzz through some announcements. Um, <clears throat> and uh, where's Keith? There he is. Now, did you want to say something or are you just... Oh, thank everybody for their lamps. You guys had extra. You guys had extra light because we got a lot of lamps over there, <laughs> and uh, that's for the uh, Friday night cafe. It's not in your bulletin yet. It will be uh, next week. We'll make it more uh, and try and get it in every week actually. But it's Friday, March the third at seven o'clock is another uh, Friday night cafe, uh, and they've really been fine tuning it. Um, music's great, uh, all that good stuff. And now we're going to try and change the mood a little. The, the lighting, you know, the fluorescents uh, <clears throat> over there aren't exactly cafe style. So we're going we're gonna to get more cafe style. Um, Sunday morning at 9.30, we have prayer over here in the children's classroom. And, and that's basically people praying for the service this that morning. So they were over there praying for this morning. Um, then uh, the sisterhood meeting will be Monday, February 20th at Deborah Weaver's house. And then Wednesday, February 22nd, we'll be here at 7 o'clock to 8.30 and continue our, our, our meditation series. Do you want to say anything, Kathleen? Uh, it's not in your bulletin. It's in the bulletin. Let the altar be built and the foundation laid. And um, that's what we've been doing. And then the marriage class. We will have a church at 432 or something like that. Okay. So I got to put my glasses on. This, the printing's so small. Rick and Trudy are back from Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys got a lot of surfing in? <laughs> a lot of surfing? Oh, yeah. You want to come up and say anything about the marriage class? You got anything to say? Okay, you don't. All right. Oh, you do? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's going to start February 21st, and um, you guys have been hearing it every week, but we'll let Rick expound him. Uh, Rick and Trudy. That's this Tuesday. This Tuesday. Yeah, and uh, actually, we're still rocking. <laughs> I don't think you ever want to go on a cruise on the Pacific. Stick to the Atlantic, okay? <laughs> so we'll be rocking and reeling when we get to the class. And it's uh, like uh, Robert was really good the first day to bring it up, that this is not to help those who have trouble or problems necessarily. This is for everybody. If you want to enrich your marriage, if you want to just, if, I always say if you can come and get one nugget out of the night, the whole night, that it's worth your trip. And so if you can learn one little thing that will help your marriage, and you can do that every night, every of the six weeks, uh, you'll see a change, and you'll just see improvements. So if you want to get a little more joy in your marriage, a little, maybe work out some rough edges, whatever, uh, I think everybody's going to find something that's useful to you, and I just encourage you all to come. And the singles are invited because you need to kind of get a preparation for when you do get married. It's open to everybody, <laughs> not just the people of this church. So actually, if you know somebody who's got some issues going on in their, in their life, in their marriage, whatever, uh, make them aware of it, that they are certainly welcome to come. We've got plenty of room in the fellowship hall. That's where it'll be. And uh, so if we didn't have enough room, we'd figure out something. But we'll have plenty of room. Yeah, so please we'll come. I don't think we'll have a I don't know. Um, no, no. You can be single. Yeah, you know, he'll, they'll, get, they'll prep you for marriage. Um, now, Rick and Trudy, uh, they've been doing this for a long time, and they are also um, officially our official uh, couples marriage counseling. So they do meet with people privately, okay, if that is something you need. You can go and talk to Rick and Trudy, and they'll be happy, happy to sit down with you, okay? Um, wow. Whew. <laughs> what? Oh, oh I, I, have I ever turned, have I ever turned you down? All right. I want to say something about the prayer meeting. We had eight this morning. 
I mean, uh, glory to God. But it's a good start. It's something that we can come together. There's something that happens when people come together and pray, and especially for the church. I mean, you can feel the atmosphere. Yep. And, it, and it's, it's a... It's a, uh, you know, starts at 930, but the band's usually here by 830. But the bottom line is, you know, it's 20, 30 minutes of focused prayer just for this meeting, okay? It's not about next week's meeting, not about tomorrow, not about anything but the Sunday morning meeting, okay? And uh, we count it as very important to the progression of the meeting, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, Kathleen, you want to talk about frequencies? Okay, so um, this Saturday, this is what I need to show of hands. If you have not registered online, but you're thinking about, you're going to come on Saturday, I just need to show of hands. I mean, you didn't measure online. Oh, oh okay, one, two. Okay, keep track, uh, Irene, keep track of us. <laughs> But how many of you already measured, if you have not registered online? Have not. Not. Okay, 10. 11. I like, okay, all right, because we're preparing food, and I'm preparing handouts, so I kind of have to have a pretty close idea how many people are going to show up. So show up for this. This is just, you know, when... when when, when Yahweh breathed into the nostrils of Adam, he became what? A life, a life you know, life-giving spirit, right? He became a, a living being to breathe, right? And when he said, I gave you breath so what? You could do what? Speak and have a voice. So this is about the voice that was breathed in you from the beginning and why we need to be using it and how it relates to creation and everything around that. So come for that. It is a long day, but we're going to have some fun at the end, Okay. All right, who wants to bring a meal to Laverne this week? Anybody? Going once. Cassandra. All right. Hi, Laverne. <laughs> All right, so how many of you know we're at war? Do you, really, do you know? Now, which war do you think I'm talking about? All right, so you know the spirit realm. But do you, you, you guys realize that the United States right now is in a shooting war? You know, Ukraine is our proxy, and we are spending, and so is the rest of Europe, some of the parts of Europe, a lot of money uh, supporting the Ukraine. This is literally, if you want to, you know, it's, it, it literally is a proxy war for the United States. Tons of equipment, ammunition. It's a big price tag. But beyond that, War is never good. And um, <clears throat> so be praying for that, you know, that this come to an end, that it really does. There's a lot of death. And most of the people that are dying don't even know why they're there, okay? They're being used as pawns. And it's, it really is, you know, there's a disgusting thing. And it's um, um, so just... Pray the Lord end this thing and that we quit throwing away our national resources, the ones we got left, on this, okay? Um, <clears throat> it's not that I'm in, against supporting Ukraine. It's just, you know, this is outside of the death and destruction. It's a huge financial drain on the whole world, which is never good, okay? Right. Besides the mess it leaves behind and the tons of money it takes to rebuild everything, you know? So it's never a good thing, and um, just be in prayer about that, okay? Lift, our, lift that area up. Um, so <clears throat> we want to take up a morning tithe and offering. And uh, the, oh, did you, what do you got? Karen has something you wanted, she wanted to share? Did she talk? Okay. All right. What do you got? Oh, oh, okay, come on. All right, yeah. Well, between talking to you and you, between talking to you and the next, my next thought, I forgot to ask Kathleen. 
<laughs> so, which is not unusual, but hold on ahead. to me. All right. um, hi, guys. I have not seen you all for four weeks, and it's been really hard on me. I miss my my drug, my church drug <laughs> of love. Um, so um, I guess most of you know I'm going to be real quick. Most of you know that I probably was in the hospital. Yeah. You probably don't. No, uh, then, we pray for you. Okay. Um, we, we, we. I put it <laughs> off too long, right, Jason? And I ended up with a heart attack, and it was little. But it really changed me a lot um, physically. Um, I have pain in here. God's working on that. Um, I have gone through a lot this past week. I fell all over. I, I got released from ICU early. I should have never done that. From your what? From ICU. Oh. Kathleen let, came and saw me go? there. Well, I begged and said I need to go, and they let me go. But anyhow, bo bottom line is I, had, I, uh, I pushed myself too hard and came home okay. and ended up with, with banging myself all over the place. Well, what's the praise? What's the praise part? The, well, right here, down. come here. Come sit. On. Come here. Sit down. <laughs> sit down. Thank you. Sit down. Well, tell us about the praise. Oh, so, bottom line, I was getting right to that. Bottom line, I'm 65 years old, and I finally am an owner of. I have my own home. Yeah. I'm a homeowner. <laughs> First time. So she's, uh, stay right there. So she's blessed and she knows it and she's a homeowner, but she got a little bit of physical stuff. So, you know what? Let's wrap that up right now. You guys point, point your hands at her. All right. All right. Yeah. We just declare health and wellness. And Lord, even as you gave her a new physical home to live in, we declare a new physical home in her body. A complete and restoration. And we declare it in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach Ben Yehovah Rapha Hua. Yeah, strength. And we love you too. <laughs> Woo. All right. Hey, I like that. Oh. Okay. So um, we're going to take up our morning tithe and offering. And um, well, you guys get to sit. Um, so anyway, now uh, we want to take up an offering for less. And uh, so make sure that on your checks or on your credit card, however you're giving, make sure you distinguish between the tithe and the offering. If you're giving an offering, you can just put on there uh, guest ministry, less, anything of that nature, just so we know it's separate. If you're giving online and you want to give to uh, less's ministry, um, and you've heard me talk about it for the last several weeks, so I'm not going to go there. But anyway, um, just make sure if you're giving online that you also let us know that if it's for him so that make sure that he gets every every bit of it. Whew, man, I shouldn't have sat down. Uh, <laughs> uh, I sat down in the right place. All right. Well, Lord, we just thank you for all that you do, and we're grateful. We're just grateful to be in your kingdom, part of your kingdom. We're grateful that we're written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and we're thankful that we can just give back to you in, the, in, in, in this way. Amen. Amen. Les, are you ready? Don't forget, we have oh, yep. Good thing I got Irene around.
A lot of meat. Not a lot or a lot? A lot of meat but not a lot of veggies. Oh, okay. A lot of meat, not a lot of veggies. So you guys know what I'm talking about? Who doesn't know what I'm talking about? There's, a, there's free food next door after the, after the meeting today. So make sure you go over there and uh, take it all home because in a few more weeks it's going to get replenished, okay? All right. Chair? Yeah, you're good. Looks like you're good. Let's see if we got. Fire it up. Let's see what we got. All right, how we doing? Oh, good. Better All right, now. is that it? Yep. All right. Yeah, if I can have a podium. I'll give you a break. Thanks. We're talking about the foundation. Uh, I, I hate to use numbers like this, but it was about approximately 50 years ago that I came here to pastor this little church. <laughs> and uh, it was about the same time I, mean, I met Stephen and Kathleen and uh, Chuck and Bell and some of the rest of you, and, and uh, it's been quite a ride for the last 50 years. Uh, I say that not to look back to that, but there are a couple things I want to say uh, about uh, the foundations that are laid and that... Uh, um, but not, not with a backward view, but with a forward view, where do we go from here? And uh, so I'll get that in just a minute. I want to mention I do have a bunch of books. Did I just lose myself? I did. There we go. Is that better? Um, I have a bunch of books back on the table. Most of them are $10. Some of them you'll see are grouped together. Those are sets, and the sets are $20. Uh, so that's basically it. And uh, in fact, there's a, one set I want to mention. Uh, my wife wrote children's books. Some of you know Doreen, and uh, she, her picture's on the, on the uh, bulletin. Uh, my wonderful, sweet wife of 56 years now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, and uh, yeah, amen. God is faithful. Hallelujah. But anyway, uh, she wrote uh, these uh, series of children's books about the feasts. Uh, the first one is How Hanukkah Saved Christmas, and it talks about how if the Maccabees hadn't defeated the Greeks in 100, 150 years before Jesus came, they were going to destroy the temple. The Romans did 70 years, you know, uh, 70 AD, uh, the Romans destroyed the temple. But it was there when Jesus came because of the Maccabees, and uh, I lost it again. Might need to, what am I doing here? Keeps coming off. Okay. Hallelujah. All right, so the Maccabees defeated the Greeks, and uh, the t temple survived another couple hundred years, and it had to because the prophecies were that the Messiah was going to come to the temple. So if the Maccabees hadn't defeated the Greeks, there wouldn't have been a temple, and that scripture couldn't have been fulfilled. One of hundreds of scriptures that were fulfilled in history by Jesus first appearing there uh, 2,000 years ago. So it's very important to understand stuff like that. I don't know. I, I think maybe it's better now. Is it coming off my ear? Oh, you have to get bigger ears. Got some super super glue or gorilla gr glue? Hey. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Um, so anyway, the, Doreen's books are about the uh, feast that's written to children, and uh, I encourage you to get those. And then uh, th my book, Speak to the Dirt, if you want to know just a basic foundation of the biblical principle of why God is restoring Israel, uh, this is it. Speak to the Dirt comes from Ezekiel 36 where uh, God told Ezekiel the prophet to go around and literally talk to the dirt, talk to the mountains, the hills, the rivers, the valleys, and because God had a promise to the land itself. He also had many promises to the people, but he had very specific promises to the land. And uh, so this will explain all of that. And um, also I want to say I have, uh, I'm taking a, an Israel tour this uh, September. I'm taking a group of people, uh, several people from Florida, a bunch of people from Idaho, Tennessee, North Carolina, New Hampshire. We got a whole, whole bunch of people coming together. And uh, if any of you are interested in it, uh, I'm, I'll give you one of my cards which has my, my website on it. Um, in fact, you could write down the website. It's just ElishaVision.com. Our ministry is ElishaVision Ministries. 
uh, not Elijah, but Elisha. So ElishaVision.com. And you can go on there and go on the menu and you'll see uh, 2023 Israel Tour and has all the itinerary and the costs and everything in, involved. Uh, and we, we're basically, uh, well, there it is. <laughs> Great. Uh, and we're basically going to have uh, probably 35 or so, maybe 40 people. And we still have several uh, slots available. So if you're interested, uh, make sure you, the first thing you have to do is get, get a $300 deposit in. in uh, but it, that's explained on the website. By the way, let me say something about that picture. Uh, that picture, if you look carefully, you see that dove or whatever kind of a bird it is. But do you see the faint kind of a reflection of the, behind it? My daughter Amy was with us on our last tour in 2019. And this was about 5 o'clock in the morning looking east out of the hotel over the Sea of Galilee. And that, that's a Golan Heights in the distance over there. And, and the, she was just taking a view of the sunrise. And when she snapped the picture, uh, the bird was in the picture and then that reflection, which we felt like was a kind of a word for us from the Lord. And uh, in fact, uh, God changed my daughter Amy's life uh, on that trip. It was absolutely life-changing. Actually, that's true for anybody that goes on a trip to Israel. It, you'll never be the same. Uh, it's not, it's not, you're not being a tourist. You're actually connecting with, with God's organic, uh, eternal promises to the land of Israel, to the people of Israel, and so forth, and all that he's doing there. So, um, so anyway, if you're interested in going with us in uh, September, uh, you have to kind of act quickly and get signed in. Um, I'd, I'd like to have a word of prayer, and then I want to share some prophetic insights uh, before I get into a specific, a specific scripture. But uh, So let's begin with prayer. And, and I believe that the Lord told me uh, that uh, he's going to touch people, not only in their hearts today, but even physically. There are some specific uh, promises that that even as I speak, uh, there's a healing that's flowing out. I'm not normally a, a signs and wonders guy, but I believe the Lord uh, sp spoke to me that as I speak, that there's going to be a, a healing that's just going to be flowing out. Uh, even as I'm just naturally moving my hands around as I speak, I believe there's, there's like uh, drops of, of liquid anointing just being sp uh, spread out today. So we just ask, Father God, that you would confirm your word, Lord God, Jehovah. Thank you for your faithfulness. And Lord, that promise in Timothy that even when we're not faithful, you're still faithful. You, you cannot deny yourself. That is your nature, your character, to be faithful. And so we honor you and exalt you, Jehovah God, our Father, Abba. And we thank you for your Son, Yeshua, the Messiah, who has... Uh, paid the price for our life, our liberty, our health. And Lord, we pray not only for healing, but we pray for health in our bodies. Hallelujah. And you, of course, you've forgiven our sins and delivered us from evil and given us a foundation, a place to stand, to walk with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In the name of Yeshua ben Yehovah. Amen. Hallelujah. By the way, one of my books up back there is about the name of God and gives uh, a lot of background about why we use the name of Jehovah. Uh, in, in the Old Testament, uh, in all of our English translations, uh, whenever you see the word Lord in all capital letters, the actual word in the Hebrew text is, is the name of God, Jehovah. And, it, and it's really rather almost deceiving, or certainly covered, so that people don't actually realize how much his name is used. Um, and, and uh, I, I know I've said that before here, and you probably, and Kathleen's talked about it, but uh, the name of God, Jehovah, appears in the Hebrew text of the Old Testament 6,028 times. <laughs> Who knew? I mean, you, you wouldn't know by reading in English because it just says Lord. Sometimes it's Lord with uh, small O-R-D, capital L and small letters. That, that does mean Lord, Adonai. But when it's all capital letters, it's actually the name of God, Jehovah. When you start reading your Bible and, and replace, every time you see that all caps, Lord, replace it with his name. 
And, and of course, you can pronounce it Yahweh or Yehovah, Yahuwah. So there's different pronunciations. Uh, I, don't care, I don't think he cares as much about the pronunciation as that we use his name. I remember when my first daughter, uh, the first time she came to me as a, as a little toddler or, or however old she was, and, and she says, Dada, you know, the first time she said that, you know, it's like, oh, she called me, she knows me, she knew my name, you know, yay, you know. And uh, I didn't say, no, daughter, it's Daddy, not Dada. <laughs> so do you think God cares if we mispronounce it? No. But do you think he likes to hear us use it? See, so we need to use his name in the name of Yeshua as well. All right. Um, I want to give a little bit of uh, uh, prophetic insight. You can be the, the judge. We uh, need to judge all, all prophetic things. Um, I want to comment a little bit about uh, this, this uh, new thing that's happening in, in uh, Wilmore, Kentucky at uh, Asbury Seminary. It's already spread to at least 25 other colleges. Uh, it's young people. It's young people being moved upon by the Holy Spirit. It is a sovereign work of God. And uh, we have not seen a, a sort of national outpouring. Uh, you really have to go back about 25 years to the early 90s. And the river movement, the Toronto, Pensacola, you know, all of those different things around the country and around the world. It was a wonderful uh, uh, revival time, uh, a visitation of God. Uh, there was a visitation of God right here. In fact, as a pastor, I'd been a pastor then for, I don't know, maybe 20 years, whatever it was. Uh, and, but it, all my life I had said, Lord, I pray that I could live to see a visitation of God, you know, in our own church, you know, right where we are. And, uh, and, and we had that for several years in the early 90s, right here in this room. Uh, I could just tell you stories, Kathleen, uh, all of those, those of you that were here can tell, tell you some wonderful stories about uh, what God did. I mean, there were supernatural things happening, uh, the aromas of, of the anointing oil. I remember, I remember one time uh, everybody saying, boy, what is that smell? And uh, in fact, we actually closed all the windows, turned off the air conditioner. There was a, there was a breeze going over us. And, we, and we, we closed everything down so we don't want any artificial explanation. If this, is a, if this is actually the Holy Spirit moving across the congregation, uh, we want it to be clearly that. And so we shut everything down, and it's still. There's this wind going, going over. And, and, but people are saying, what does that smell? We, people smelled, uh, a lot, a lot, they smelled roses. They smelled, uh, well, we, I did too, uh, smelled um, uh, different, uh, different uh, wood. What was the wood flavor? Uh, yeah, cedar wood, yeah. Uh, yeah, popcorn. Uh, I remember at one time there was a mixture of smells. It's just the most sweet blend of smells. And, and Stephen Peck uh, opened up the scriptures and looked up the anointing oil in the Bible and the description of the ingredients of the anointing oil as, as, he, as he read each of those. Uh, the smell we were smelling was the, the anointing oil of God because it's a mixture of different spices and things. And, uh, and, you know, that's, that's one of the things that happened. There's, you know, people saw angels. There's, there were many uh, things. Uh, one time, oops, just lost it again. One time, uh, at least now how to fix it. <laughs> uh, one time, um, there was somebody standing at this end of the room, and, uh, and they are holding their hands like this and, uh, and pouring Something I'm, I'm not somebody. Somebody else was here might remember more, uh, more exactly. But uh, they were praying and holding their hands like this, and they said they felt like there was liquid in the, in their hands. They didn't see anything. They just felt like it. And uh, somebody at the other end of the room uh, looked up and uh, said, "What's going on up there? What is that?" yellow liquid that looks like honey or something in their hands, and it's getting all over the carpet. <laughs> so they actually saw a manifestation of the, like the anointing oil and stuff like that. So it was a real genuine visitation. But I'd like to zero in on one specific uh, event that happened one night. Uh, we had a meeting, I think it was a Tuesday night, if I'm not mistaken. It started about 7, and, 
It ended at 4 in the morning. Nobody would leave. There were about 50 people uh, at 4 in the morning, and we finally just said, okay, obviously nobody's going to leave because they don't want to miss anything. We need to all agree to leave together. <laughs> you know, and uh, that's how we finally went home. But, uh, but uh, many of you know Pam uh, Raymond. Uh, Tim Raymond was her uh, husband. He was one of our pastors. And, but Pam had a very personal visitation. She was over in this area. I was sitting just behind her at the time. And she just fell over uh, in her seat and then fell over on, just rolled over onto the floor. And she's laying down on the floor and uh, just just completely out, just in the presence of the Lord. And I believe it was something like a couple hours or, or more that she was in that uh, condition. And uh, at the end, uh, she couldn't speak. Uh, she actually went home that night, was not able to speak, just overwhelmed. And the next night, 24 hours later, uh, when we regathered here, um, she the uh, the leader called her up to to give a testimony of what had happened to her and uh, she could now barely speak but instead of speaking in normal uh, cadence like I'm speaking she could only speak haltingly and she said I was visited by an angel Two angels, and they said they want. I'm doing it faster than she did, okay? But anyway, she was. It was like that. They said they wanted to take me to the holy of holies, and I said, no, no, I'm afraid to do that. And so they left, and then they came back a little later, and there were four, <laughs> and they said, we want to take you to the Holy of Holies, and very slow, you know, word by word. And, uh, and so then the, the leader said, uh, well, what happened to you? And she said, I changed. And he said, well, how did you change? Now, keep in mind, she's one of the pastor's wives. She says, I used to feel like when somebody came to me and wanted me to help them, I felt like saying, here's 25 cents, find someone who cares. <laughs> yeah, and the leader said, well, what's changed? She said, I care. And then she said, he asked her, what, what was it like? Did you see anything? No, it was all white. She didn't see anything. She said, well, did you learn anything? And, he's, and she says, I never knew how holy God is. I submit to you that a visitation of God, among all the other things, should have that effect on us. I believe that's what's happening in Asbury and as it's spreading around the nation. And I believe it's God who recognizes that there is a whole generation of the last 25 or 30 years of young people that have been born into a nation in chaos, and horrible things happening, one after another after another. And the young people are hopeless. They're terrified. We make jokes about snowflakes. You know, all those college kids are just a bunch of snowflakes. Well, they are genuinely terrified. They're living in fear, they, in terror. They have, no, they have no hope for the future. They see no silver lining, only the dark cloud. They're, they're oppressed, depressed. They're, 
the suicides among young people are astronomical today. And they haven't had a visitation of God. And so I believe it's the nature of God that he understands that they need to have this opportunity to experience him, his Holy Spirit. You know, the, the Hebrew for Holy Spirit is uh, Ruach HaKodesh. So if you, if you just translate it literally to English, it was, it's Spirit the Holy. Spirit the Holy. Um, that somehow helps me understand a little better uh, rather than like the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. You know, it's like the Spirit, the Holy. Because <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit that brings, that manifests our holy God in our midst. There's a difference between omnipresence where God is everywhere present, sovereignly, of course, but then there's a manifest presence when he actually comes and visits us. You know, there's a scripture, I think it's in uh, Acts 3.17, I believe, that says, uh, times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord, and then so, so therefore repent, it says. Well, the Lord showed me a little insight into that verse because I had always heard, just in my own thinking, maybe you thought of it different, but the way I always heard that was that uh, times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. God in heaven, he's seated on his throne, the angels all around, the 24 elders and worship and glory and, and you know, the presence of the Lord is just mighty and magnificent and wonderful and wouldn't it be great to be there and, and once in a while from his presence he gives us a little refreshing, you know. By the way, there's some of that rain I was talking about. Have it. Help yourself. Amen. Really, really. Receive. So God, I, I thought of that as, as the refreshing coming from where he is up there in his presence. But that's not what it says. The times of refreshing come when God is present, when he manifests his presence with us. That's refreshing. This has been a refreshing time already this morning, hasn't it? It's been, there's been a refreshing of the Spirit. What God is, the way God does this, this, this visitation thing that he's doing, I believe, in our nation, is that it's a sovereign thing. He, he's doing it. You know, we may not be aware. We may be preoccupied, you know, oh, look at what happened in the news, you know. But, but he's doing something. We need to be aware. We need to, to plug in, to, to connect with what he's doing. Say, Lord, do it here. Do it now. Do it in us. Do it in me. Let, let whatever you want to do, Lord, let it happen with me too. You know, that, that's our heart, our attitude. Just open, be open to God. And, and, of course, we always, anytime we open ourselves, uh, we, we have the parameters. We're not open to any other spirit. We're only open to the Holy Spirit. So, you know, no one else is welcome. No other dem demonic forces are welcome. Only the Spirit of God. But we open our hearts. So, so um, now mention again the foundations going back 50 years. One of the things that's so wonderful is that there's been a continuity all during these years. Uh, Stephen himself was pastoring for, uh, I think, 25 years after I left. I was here 25 years. Now Kathleen's been here several years, and, and there's just been a continuity all the way through. Um, it, we, we first met right shortly after uh, Doreen and I uh, moved into this, uh, into this town. We've been over in Orlando and been part of the ministry over there. But... Uh, God builds on the foundation, and, and so there's more is being added, and you folks are part of that, and there's more to come. God, he's not finished. It's not ending. This is, this is not a funeral service, <laughs> you know, uh, but this is actually more of a, who, who was it said earlier that Robert was a good cheerleader, <laughs> you know? Uh, I, I want to be a good cheerleader. I want to say, yeah, God, go get him. Keep coming. Yeah, Hallelujah. We're for it. We're, we're still with you, Lord. We're going all the way. I was talking to, uh, uh, who was it, Chuck, that mentioned about uh, Silas and, or, I mean, I mean uh, Joshua and Caleb. Yeah, when you came in, we're, 
came up for some reason, but uh, when Joshua and Caleb were uh, in, uh, they were the two spies of the twelve that came back with a good report. The other ten were judged as their whole generation was judged because everybody over the age of 20 were believing the evil report of the spies. And uh, only Joshua and Caleb said, no, no, God's, God said he's going to give us a land. I don't matter how many giants there are, we'll, we'll get them all. And so uh, their attitude, their faith, God says, you're going you're gonna to enter the promised land, but your whole generation is not going to. And as we get older, <laughs> we, we notice that people we've walked with you know, over the years keep dying. And uh, imagine if you were Joshua and Caleb, and everybody in your generation died before you. In fact, you couldn't go to the promised land until they all passed away. <laughs> uh, you know, and so the point is, how did they... How did, how, were, how did they go through that? Forty years. Like a million and a half people died in the wilderness because of that severe judgment of God that they had believed the evil report instead of believing the faith report. And so, uh, so I heard a preacher one time dramatize that by you know, saying that Joshua and Caleb had to have a pretty special relationship uh, with each other because it had to get pretty discouraging Burying somebody else again, you know, and and all for forty years. That's what they were doing, wandering around, going around this mountain, and so uh, they had to encourage one another. They had to say, "Are, are you still going, brother? Are you still going all the way?" Yeah, yeah, I'm going. I'm not turning back. I, you know, it's tough, but I'm going all the way through. Let's keep going, you know. And then, of course, the good news is they crossed over the Jordan River when it was time after forty years and. And Caleb, by that time, was 80-something. What was he? 80, around 80. And uh, Joshua says, you know, well, you're, I guess Joshua was like 20 years younger or something. Joshua says, you know, well, there's this beautiful valley over here. You know, why, why don't we, you just go ahead and take that valley and just enjoy, enjoy your later years. Caleb says, no way, man. I've waited 40 years for this. Give me some giants. <laughs> I want the giants. And he went in and took the giants, Okay. That, that's, that's the life of the Spirit of God moving in us. And that's where we need to be. We need to be listening, moving, be aware, be alert, uh, be, be read up, prayed up, <laughs> and ready to go and, and serve the Lord. Now, I'm given several things that I feel like the Lord has shown me. Here's one. I believe the Lord prophetically has said that this new visitation isn't going to be primarily large gatherings. It's not going to be primarily like uh, filling stadiums. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, you know, we've always talked about how wonderful it would be if we could fill stadiums with, with Jesus' people loving the Lord and everything. Wasn't it interesting? Uh, some of you might have, uh, might, I'm sure most of you have heard about the, uh, the uh, football game uh, in one of the playoff games where the guy dropped with a heart attack and died and they... they uh, brought him back to life, and then he died again in the hospital, and he brought him back to life twice. And, and, but, it, but if you saw any of those pictures, that was an entire football stadium full of football fans praying. They were praying for this young guy, the, the, uh, all of the, his uh, teammates, and the other team were all in a big circle on the field on their knees praying. God can move. God can get people to pray. You know, he, if he gets their attention and they feel like something's pretty desperate, they are going to turn to pray. So God's going to do this. But I don't believe this move is about big stadiums full of people. I believe it's one-on-one, two-by-two, us just talking to our the people around us, people in the grocery store. The, the, the clerk at the grocery store says, oh, man, I'm having a bad day. i gotta, I got to... Splitting headache, you know. One time a, a girl said that to me, and I says, well, would you like me to pray for you? She says, oh, that would be nice. Thank you. And I said, well, give me your hand. She says, you mean right now? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And I prayed for her, and the Lord relieved her headache. Do that. Do that. 
That's how this visitation is going to happen because God is going to touch people through you. We, we don't, I don't mean, I mean no disrespect, but we don't need Billy Graham. We don't need Oral Roberts or Benny Hinn or somebody. We've got you with Jesus in you. You just have to activate. You just have to do it. All right? So I encourage you to do that. Now here's another one. Um, several months ago, uh, it was before the Israeli election, uh, the youth pastor, a young lady in our church up in, in uh, Wake Forest, North Carolina, uh, gave a, a great uh, message on uh, Samson. Just preached the whole story of Samson. I won't do that here because I th think you, you, you all know it. He was a very, at the end, was very immoral, completely disobedient, uh, did, did the opposite of what God said to do. And, and he'd been a judge of Israel for, I, I think, 20 years or something like that, and defeated a lot of Philistines, and you know, you know the story. Uh, and and uh, when Delilah was seducing him, he kept lying to her. But then finally, he told her the truth, and and so she uh, called in the the, the uh, Philistines. They cut off his hair, and he lost his power. And the point is, God withdrew uh, from him, and th they put his eyes out, and they put him in prison. But then, after uh, some extended period of time. Uh, his hair grew back, and God revisited him. And, it, and I, I say just in, in all honesty and transparency, that there's not a scripture verse in that passage that says Samson repented. But I'm interpreting the, the fact that God's power came back on him is that, it, and, and also just from human nature, if it were me, I think I would repent somewhere along there. <laughs> So I believe he did repent, but then God used him. And of course, you know, when he brought down the building, he killed more Philistines in his death than he had in his entire life as a judge of Israel. So the point of that is, uh, that, that, was a, that was a message. The Lord's kind of confirmed that to me about that's very important. But then the Lord spoke to me. This was still in the meeting. I want you to pray for the restoration of Samson's. Pray for the restoration of Samson's. There are a lot of believers, a lot of believers who said, man, I blew it. I, I, I messed it. I, I missed everything. I, I, God can't use me. I'm worthless to him now. Uh, I'll just, you know, eat some worms and die. <laughs> but God is saying, Pray for Samson's to be restored. We need all hands on deck, I believe, for what's coming in America and in the earth. And so we need to pray for Samson's to be restored. That was the word he gave me. I shared it uh, in, the, in the meeting that day. Then a couple weeks later, the Lord added a little more, and he said, uh, I want you to pray for Benjamin Netanyahu and Donald Trump because they are my Samsons that I have set aside. Pray that they would be restored. And I understood in my spirit what God was saying is, something has to happen in their heart. If it does, if their heart moves in the direction God is, is pulling them, and they submit and yield, God can restore them. If they don't, he won't. Well, then it was just a few weeks after that that they had the election in Israel, and Benjamin Netanyahu was elected again and is now the prime minister of Israel. And I believe, that's, to me, that was the Lord saying, I've restored him, and he, is, he really is the key in terms of human leadership. He's the key. Uh, he was behind the Abraham Accords and, and, uh, and standing against Iran and so forth. And the, the decision about Iran is imminent. Uh, something is going to have to happen very, very soon about Iran. What a lot of people don't know is that Iran uh, is actually five distinct ethnic groups. About half of them are Iranian Persians. 
Uh, but the other, there's four other groups that make the other half of the population. And, and they're Baluchis, uh, Azeris, Kurds, and Arabs. And those are, they're very distinct, strong, and they're, they're part of the, um, there's, a, there's a real revolution taking place in Iran right now. And it's led by young women. Uh, there was a young girl that was arrested by the morality police, yes, the morality police, for, for not having, she had her head covered with a scarf, but a little bit of hair was sticking out. And that wasn't allowed. And they arrested her. They took her into a police van and beat her to unconsciousness. And she died. And, and her, the, her picture then was, became posted on, on all over the country. And, and girls and young women would come into the town squares and take off their scarves. And, they, and by the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, taking a stand. In fact, even just this week, there was a lady who was part of the government, a woman who was part of the government, was on a, a platform of the meeting of the, of the, uh, the uh, Islamic Republic. The Ayatollah, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was present in the meeting on the stage. She was on the stage, and in front of everybody, she took her scarf off and walked off the, sta off the stage. They are not... A, they have not been able to, to, uh, to put this down. They've, they've arrested, I think it was something like 25,000 people have been arrested. Uh, several have been actually executed because of the protests, and yet the protests continue. And, and oh, by the way, there are confirmed reports that the Ayatollah has actually transferred several billion dollars to bank accounts in Venezuela and has a relationship with Maduro. Is he the dictator, Venezuela, with Maduro, huh, see the present one, yes. yeah, yeah, uh, that, that they, that the Ayatollah can have asylum in Venezuela if they have to flee their own country, in other words, most people don't realize how shaky it is there, now, the dark side of that is they could easily do some very stupid things, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, out of reaction or something, so we need to be, be, really pray. But I said all that just to say that Netanyahu is, is, the, is the man that God wants to be the Prime Minister of Israel right now, and we need to pray for him and give him prayer cover and so forth, uh, because, uh, and, and, and connecting this, by the way, to the revival, I wrote a blog on my blog this week. By the way, if any of you aren't reading my blog, just give me your email and I'll, I'll uh, add you to the list. But, but he, the, the thing the Lord showed me uh, this week is that uh, the revival that started up in Kentucky is going to go over the whole world, and it's going to also affect Israel. The young people in Israel are actually going to be visited by the Holy Spirit of God. And, and you, I'm sure you're, the Holy Spirit will bear witness to this statement. God doesn't do anything that doesn't affect Israel, all right? And he doesn't do anything in Israel that doesn't affect us <laughs> in the church. So, so make no mistake, it's all connected in what God is doing. And for the young people of Israel, you may, may or may not know, but Tel Aviv is actually considered the homosexual capital of the entire Middle East. Homosexuality is, is open, it's allowed, it's permitted, uh, totally against Scripture. Uh, but it's, you know, a free country, as they say. But Tel Aviv especially is really, uh, really a very immoral uh, place. Although there's a good friend of mine there that said, uh, I, I spoke at a, uh, a little church plant he was starting about 30 years ago in, in Tel Aviv. And uh, it was the first one he was starting meeting in a hotel. And he now has a half a dozen churches all around Tel Aviv. And they, they go out to all the festivals. Anywhere youth gather, they come and they share Jesus with them that Jesus is the Messiah of Israel. And, and so God is moving, you know, you know, in spite of what the devil... So in other words, don't, don't look at what the devil is doing. What is God doing? Ooh, wow, that's better, <laughs> you know. So, so uh, now, I've got to complete the thing about Samson. So I believe God has restored Netanyahu. I believe the jury is still out on Donald Trump. I believe he is 
one of, if not the best president we ever had in terms of what he accomplished in four years. I believe he could really lead us again, but this has now become a matter of the heart, his heart, and, and how his heart is toward God. So when you pray, when you pray for Samson's to be restored, <laughs> he's one of them, and, and it's still kind of hanging in the balances, I believe. That's just what I'm hearing in the spirit. Uh, you can judge it yourself. So, uh, so as we move forward now uh, in, the, in the Spirit, there's more of a, of, um, on a more intimate, personal level. When, when we had that visitation in the 90s here in this room, uh, it was, there was an, uh, an amazing sense of intimacy with the Lord. Um, I, I won't tell, go on and tell more stories, but there were just so many very personal things. I, I'll share one thing that happened to me personally. It was kind of neat. Um, some of you know, uh, you know the Raymonds, and uh, Tim and Pam Raymond had, a, had three sons, and their middle son was Silas, uh, and uh, he's a pharmacist now over in, in Tampa and the other side of the, the bay, and uh, God's blessing him. But anyway, we were over in the fellowship hall and, and uh, just praying and worshiping and just soaking in the presence of the Lord, and, and, uh, and uh, Silas came up to me and he says, Pastor Les, uh, I feel like I'm supposed to pray for you. Can I pray for you? And I said, sure. And I just put my hands up, and he, he put uh, both hands on my, kind of on my shoulders, you know, or kind of more in my back. In fact, one was, I think one was on my shoulder and one was in my back. And he was behind me. And he prayed for a little while and prayed for me, and the Lord had blessed me and spoke in tongues over me. And, 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 and then he stopped, and, and the hand on my shoulder was taken off, but the other hand was still in the middle of my back. Very strong, firm hand in the middle of my back. And he, but he, he stopped praying, and, uh, and so I was just saying, okay, thank you, Lord. Mm. Whatever you want to do, Lord. And I'd say a minute or maybe two minutes went by, and uh, I heard... Silas in the other end of the room praying for somebody else. <laughs> and that hand was still in my back. <laughs> and there was nobody there. You know, so, so there was intimacy. When we say that, I love to say that Jesus touched people. You know there are no pictures of Jesus, no, no drawings or paintings of Jesus in one of those chairs, you know, with the with people uh, carrying them on their sh on their shoulders, you know, and the the king or the potentates riding in this chair, you know, there aren't any pictures of Jesus. He's not portrayed that way because he was not that way. Jesus touched people. He touched people. He went into the into the midst of the crowds and just touched people. I hope you've been watching the Chosen and enjoying the Chosen. Uh, the lady when she reached crawled through and touched the, the, the seat seat, you know, the, the hem of his garment, and, uh, and he stopped everything. Whoa, <laughs> something just happened here, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, zeroed in on what she, what the Lord, that she'd been healed by her faith. You know, he made a point that your faith has healed you. Um, and that reminds me, I want to pray just here before I go further uh, for um, some of you know my... my uh, nephew, Dan Lawrence, and his wife, Trina, has been fighting cancer for several years, and she's been winning uh, up until just recently. It's gotten pretty, pretty desperate, <coughs> and uh, I, I don't mean this to dishonor in any way, Trina, but, but uh, she, her father, her mother, a brother, and a sister all died with cancer too young. And she has one other sister left who's younger than her. And she is saying that I'm going to die too because they all died. Now, by saying that, uh, she, that that's her faith. So what do we do about that? What do we do about somebody that that's saying 
the wrong thing. Words matter. The words that we speak actually are creative words. And if we say, oh, I'm just going to die of this cancer, or I don't, even, I don't even like people to use personal pronouns and say, oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I have this cancer, or, or this, my cancer is, is really bugging. It's not your cancer. It's the devil's cancer. All right? It matters what you say. It matters what you say. Just, just little, little adjustments can actually help your faith. It matters what you say. And so I want to pray for Trina. I want to pray for Trina that God, in the, in the sovereign visitation that we're now beginning to experience, just the first trickles of it. But I'm just praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that there would be a touch in the heart of Trina that you would give her a gift of faith to believe that she can be healed rather than faith that she must die because her other family members did. Lord, I pray that you would break whatever, if there's some generational curse there in her family, whatever it is, Lord, I pray that she would come under the blessing of the people of God that love her and that are around her. Dan and, and uh, my brother Ken and, and Tim and Tammy and the other family members and so forth out there. But Lord, most of all, that you would give her a gift of faith and give her the right words, Lord. Let, let the Holy Spirit start changing the words she uses. We ask, Lord, for her healing and complete restoration. In the name of Yeshua ben Yehovah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Trina, Trina, we declare life. We declare life into your body. We declare life into your soul and life into your spirit. Yes, yes, yes. The death cannot have you. We declare life. Rise up. Believe your God. Washa kariye di andara mashako ya saka shaka shaki di andara basondoko life Trina we speak life to you yes 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 Father I thank you that you hear us I thank you that you hear us and you've completed your work in her. Your healing. Yes, Father. Your strength. Your Holy Spirit rising up. Thank you, Lord. She'll be renewed. <laughs> yes, Lord. Become the Samson yes. that you're calling her to be. Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. Uh, can, can that microphone... Uh, Dave, where's Dave Carpenter? Ah, Dave, I think you're supposed to pray for it too. You, you talked about being able to speak over the distances. Father, we declare your victory. And this in all our trials, Father. We know that you are preeminent, you are dominant, that the, your word goes out and it heals, Father. We speak life. We declare life. Yes. We declare hope. We declare freedom in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, visit, show your power. We declare your presence. We thank you and glorify you yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord.
Yes, Lord. Now I, want, I also want to uh, pray with you, each of you. I, I'm asking that you would submit to this word of the Lord and stop using personal pronouns to, to claim your sickness. It's not yours. It's the devil. Amen. So this is a correction, a little correction for all of us, because we, and we tend to fall into it and do it without thinking. Uh, but I want to just pray for you, and if, if you're bearing witness of that, then, then just submit to it and say, Yes, Lord, I will now watch what I say. I will listen to your voice. I will say what you say. Just as Jesus only did what he saw you do. Jesus only said what he heard you say. Guard our lips. Guard my lips, Lord. Let me speak truth. Let me speak faith. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you remember Arthur Burt used to come here uh, once, or, once or twice a year, a uh, wonderful man of God from Wales. Uh, in fact, <laughs> funny, uh, Doreen and I were talking the other day. Um, he asked me if he could speak to me in my office one day when he was here. I don't know, I'm not really sure I've shared this with too many people, but uh, he, let's see, um, he was 34 years older than me, I remember that, uh, and uh, I think he was around 80 at the time, and, uh, and I'm actually 77, I'll be 78 in July, so I'm getting about the same age he was <laughs> when he asked to meet with me in my office, and he said, Pastor Les, he says, I, I really need counsel. I need you to pray with me, and I need to hear from the Lord. Oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, there we go. I said, uh, he said, I, I need you to pray with me. I'm, and I'm thinking, me pray, you, you know, give you a word? <laughs> you know, you're the, you're the prophet, you're the man of God, you know. Well, anyway, uh, what he, wanted to, what he wanted to hear from God was whether or not he should continue traveling and ministering because uh, he was like an 80-something or whatever. And, uh, and I, don't you know, I honestly don't remember what I said, but his conclusion was he heard from God that he's supposed to continue. And, of course, he did. Uh, the last time he flew to America, to our area, uh, he was uh, 100 years old ministered uh, in, in our area, in our, in our home and in some meetings. Uh, he then, the next year, came back again to Florida somewhere. I heard that he was in Florida at 101, and then he died at 102. <laughs> uh, so, so, is that right? Yeah, there you go, at 100. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, in fact, I had a, uh, when he was 97, we had a meeting. So it's, he, he was never interested in having big meetings, and, and I had it in my heart to, to try to get a crowd together. So we, we got a, uh, about 500 people together in a worship center in Raleigh, and, uh, and as far as I knew, that's probably the biggest crowd he you know, normally ever spoke to. Uh, and I introduced him and, and tried to really honor him and so forth, and, and that was a platform, and uh, I came down after I introduced him, or just the last thing I said before I stepped off the platform was, uh, Brother Arthur is 97, I'm 63, I think I was 63 at the time. I guess that means I've got 34 more years of ministry. Well, the people reacted like you just did, kind of like, eh, yeah, mm, kind of, what? <laughs> you know, and, and I said that, and felt a little odd, and I went and I sat down in the seat, I was in the front row, and just as I was sitting down, the Lord said, did you want to limit it to 34 more years? I mean, it, I, it struck me like a lightning bolt. I said, no, 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 that's not what I meant. That's not, a, that's not what I meant. I, you know, 
and I repented for joking, you know. And, I, you know, I don't know how, how long I'll live, but uh, I'm willing to keep ministering, you know, into my hundreds, you know, whatever, uh, because we're just here to do whatever he says to do, like we prayed, you know. Jesus never said anything that he didn't hear the Father say. He never did anything except he saw the Father do. You know, we, we write a whole newsletter if we do one thing God says us, that he wants us to do, right? <laughs> and uh, and uh, so it's, uh, it's important that we're, uh, that we're obedient, that we go with the flow. One of the things that Arthur used to always say, he, he's the only one I've ever really heard emphasize this, uh, and I have since, since. Uh, God wants more than healing in his body. He wants health. Arthur ministered that health is a higher level of faith. We, we, we need to aspire to health. Do we get sick, unfortunately? But, but do we, should we accept that as being normal? No, it shouldn't be normal if we, are, if we could reach that higher level of faith where we, where we move in health and in God's strength and so forth. Um, God's, God has, uh, he deals with each, each of us differently, you know, individually. And some people, uh, God, for some reason, allows them to die. Others, he allows to live. Um, most times we can't explain that, <laughs> and we just trust him. But our, our own aspiration should be to grow from faith to faith, from glory to glory that we would stretch our, our walk in Him and, and keep pressing on <laughs> to that mark and the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Keep going, keep moving in that direction, being obedient. And it's, again, it's not about big meetings. It's about doing it right where we are, doing it on the street, doing it in the, in the office, doing it in the school, doing it in the grocery store or the, the Home Depot or wherever you are that we let God move through us and we speak. Now, um, I want to just finish with a, just a little bit of a report. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited about going to Israel in September. So much is, is happening in Israel. So much has happened since I was there the last time, which is four years ago. Uh, because of the pandemic, we didn't go there for a couple years. But uh, I first went in 1984, and it's unbelievable the changes since then. It was still largely a rocky land. Now there are forests on a lot of hills that used to be rocky. Uh, one of the places that you always want to visit when you go to Israel is Yad Vashem, the, the Holocaust uh, uh, memorial. And uh, when I went to that in 1984, and you came out the, the exit, uh, you, you just looked over totally rocky hillsides, maybe a little bush here or there. And in 2019, came out of that backside of the building, and it's forest, just forest, the Jerusalem forest everywhere, and, and it's, it's the promise of God. Uh, from 70 A.D. to 1948, Israel never won a war. The Jews never won a war. From 1948 to, to now, they've never lost a war. What changed? How do you explain that? Well, it's actually very clear in the scriptures that God said in Romans 11 that he's going to judge severely the Jews because they rejected Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said, I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not. And, uh, and you didn't know the time of your what? You didn't know the time of your visitation. Thank you, Lord. I didn't, I didn't have that ahead of time. That's, that's talking about where we are right now. There's a visitation going on. Do you know? Are you aware that God is visiting us in a different way than it's been normal for the last 25 years? So Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Uh, I think I've told this story before, but Jay Swallow, the chief of the Cheyenne Indian Nation, uh, was a friend of mine. I, I had the privilege of knowing him for several years before he died. Uh, he was a man of God, an apostle. 
supernatural ministry, just an amazing guy. Uh, but uh, he told a story one time about when he went out hunting, and he was hunting for uh, prairie chickens. And he, he thought he saw some movement in the, in the tall grass, and, uh, and he raised up his rifle and, and was pointing, he saw the, the chicken, and he's just about to pull the trigger, and he saw a little chick beside the hen. And he put his gun down and said, I'm not going to take away their mother. And so he let her live. And uh, just no more than a day or two later, there was a prairie fire that just swept across and burned all of the tall grass down to the bare ground. And he walked back out there in the area where he'd seen that, that hen, and, uh, and he thought he saw her over there. And so he went over and, and walked up to her, and there she was, uh, roasted, sitting on the ground. He kicked her, and underneath her were all of her chicks alive. She could have escaped. Prairie chickens can fly. She could have flown ahead of the plane. But she didn't. She stayed. Jesus said over Jerusalem, I would have gathered you like a hen gathers her chicks, but you would not. And the judgment of 1850 years of severe judgment, of scattering to the nations of the Jews, was the severity. Paul says in Romans 11, Behold both the goodness and the severity of God. Goodness towards those who believed, severity towards those who did not believe. So we are now past that period of judgment that ended in 1948. God turned the page. He's now blessing Israel, restoring Israel, bringing the people back. They got their land back. They got Hebrew, the language, back. They got the, uh, all the blessing of prosperity. They've been founding, finding trillions of cubic feet of natural gas offshore, uh, other natural minerals. Uh, they're being blessed in their medicine, the discoveries. They're finding, uh, th they've already found a, a way to stop the progression of Alzheimer's, and they believe they're close to a cure for Alzheimer's. What a horrible disease, and God's blessing. That, of course, you know the technology. Uh, the, the, it's a startup nation, you know, and all that they're doing in that way. God is blessing and favoring Israel. And where we're headed is into a time of peace for Israel because God says, I'm going to give uh, peace to my people, and it'll be for a season. There's still other things that will happen prophetically. But a lot. one thing I, I, I want to... Uh, I want to say very clearly something that, that may be controversial, but I want you to hear it, <laughs> and you judge for yourself. But one of the things a lot of the prophetic speakers are saying today is, Gog and Magog, this is it. Gog and Magog, it's all happening. You know, look at Ukraine, look at Russia. Gog and Magog is happening. And uh, if you read the, the chapter in Ezekiel 38 about the Gog and Magog invasion, uh, it is relevant. It is coming, but this is not it. Because in that passage, it very clearly says that Israel will be at peace. They'll be in a land of unwalled villages. They'll bring down their walls. They'll have no bar, neither bars nor gates. They will be, at the moment of that invasion, the condition of Israel will be an unprecedented peace. Okay? That's not what they have right now. There was, a, there was a knife attack in Jerusalem last week. Uh, the, the, in other words, there's terrorist attacks still going on. That's where we are. So do not believe, I, I don't mean to, I'm not trying to oppose the, these prophetic speakers, but believe the Bible. Be, believe what the Bible says. And take that, you know, take that to heart. Know what he wants to do. Hallelujah. Oh, time to go, huh? <laughs> so, by Laverne. <laughs> well, um, let's stand, if you would, please, and we'll, I'll go ahead and just take a hint. <laughs> That's right.
We don't want her to miss anything, <laughs> right? All right. Hallelujah. God bless you, Laverne. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just speak life, Lord. I speak refreshing from your presence. Let us be refreshed this morning just to have gathered together. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in Israel. Thank you, Lord God, for the, the restoration that is taking place. And, Lord, what you're doing in Israel is also going to affect the church, the, the true believers who are walking with you, Lord. We're, we're in on this. We have been grafted into Israel. Israel is not grafted into the church. The church is grafted into Israel. And, Lord, we thank you for being able to partake of the covenants of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the promises. Lord, we receive them as part of your inheritance. Thank you, Father God. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I pray, Lord, for rain, physical rain to fall in Israel in this rainy season to restore the aquifer and to, and to fulfill your word that the desert will blossom like a rose. Let it be, Lord. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Yeshua ben Yehovah, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Yeah. All right. So next door we do have food pantry, but also if anybody wants uh, personal ministry from Les, he'll be up here. Just come up and form a line if you want to seek prayer from uh, Les. All right.